let's get some practice finding the critical numbers of a function. So here we have x squared minus 4x. So before we can start finding the critical numbers, we have to find the derivative. The derivative is what determines whether something is a critical number or not. So the derivative is equal to 2x minus 4. So a simple, simple power rule there. Okay. Now, to find a critical number, we have to find out when this derivative either doesn't exist or when it's equal to zero. And of course, this derivative is going to exist everywhere, right? In other words, it won't ever not exist. Because this is just the, the equation of a line. And we know that a line goes on forever and ever. No matter what you plug into it, you'll always get something out. Okay, so the only critical numbers are going to be when this is equal to zero. So let's do that. Let's set this equal to zero. So we found, we found the derivative, and then we're going to set it equal to zero. So 2x minus 4 equals zero. Pretty simple equation. You probably can already see the answer, but let's just go through it. So 2x will equal 4. We had 4 to both sides, and then divide by 2, and x equals 2. So when x is 2, the derivative is 0. So that is our critical number. And maybe just to see that better, f prime of 2, if you plug 2 into the derivative, that will equal 0. So 2 is our critical number. All right. Let's take a look at that on a graph. So this is our function, x squared minus 4. And let me just make it a little bit bigger, even though I risk distorting it slightly. Okay. So here we have 2. This is 2 right here. And you can see that that corresponds directly to the minimum value. So this critical number is a minimum. That means that the slope is 0. And the sl when the slope is 0, there's a horizontal tangent right there. So that's something we've already discussed. And, and now hopefully you can see that, that it's not too hard to find a critical number. And, and that will make it not too hard to find minimums of functions. OK. And maximums, for that matter. Let, let's look at something a little bit more interesting, which is going to be this function graphed alongside with its derivative. So here is the function and the derivative together. And this is 2 again. Hopefully you can see that. I know the numbers sometimes turn out small on these videos. So in blue, again, we have the function. And in red here, we have the derivative, which is 2x squared, or sorry, two, sorry 2x, 2x minus 4. And like we said, 2x minus 4 is just the equation of a line. So that's the line. Now look at it. When x is 2, the derivative is equal to 0, right? When x is 2, the derivative crosses the x-axis. It's at 0. That's something we already knew. And the original function, that was a minimum. So hopefully you're starting to see that relationship. And the derivative, we said, is just slope. So that means if we plug a number into this derivative, the value that comes out will be the slope. So if we plugged in 0 into the derivative, then the slope will be negative 4, right? If we plug 0 into the derivative, we'll get negative 4 right there. And that means that the original function, the slope of the original function when x is 0 is negative 4. So if we were to take that line, this tangent line I'm, I'm attempting to draw, let me extend it so you can see it. So that's the, that's the tangent line. If we were to take the slope of that line, so the change in, change in y over change in x, we would get four changes in y for every one change in x for that tangent line. The slope, in other words, the slope of that tangent line is, is negative four. Sorry, negative four changes in y, right? We're going down. So we'd get negative four, uh, or the, sorry, the slope of that tangent line is just going to be negative four. So that, that works for any value you, you plug into the derivative. It will tell you the slope of the original function. If we plugged in uh, 3, 
when we plug in 3 into the, deri into the derivative, we get out 2. So when x is 3 is 3, f prime of x is equal to 2. So when x is 3, the derivative is 2. That means the slope of the original function when x is 3 is just 2. So let me see if I can attempt to draw this tangent line here. So it's got to be a little bit more like, oops. Well, maybe that, that looks about to be the tangent line. And what does that mean? That means the slope of this line is 2. For every one change in x, we get 2 in y. So now instead of just picking points on the derivative like we've been doing, or you could pick a point on the derivative and find out the exact slope of the function at a certain point, what would be more interesting would be to say, in general, when are the slopes positive? And you can see to the right of 2, any, any value you pick for the derivative is going to come out positive. To the left of 2, any value you pick for the derivative is going to come out negative. And that is, so that's, that's exactly what we did in the, in the very first video about extrema. The slopes are negative here and they're positive here. And this derivative, is, it's clear to see that now. And right when, at the minimum point, the slope is zero. That was our critical number. Okay, so hopefully this, this helps you gain some better understanding of the relationship between a function and its derivative. The derivative is just slope, and now we're just looking in general, when is, when is the slope positive? So, so to the right of 2, the slope is positive. To the left of 2, the slope is negative. Okay, see you in the next video. We'll look at some more functions.